folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do today was I wanted to add another video in our basic bushcraft series. And I want to talk about the multi-use or multi-functionality of the toggle. Very easy to make right off the landscape. As long as you have some cordage, you can use toggles for a lot of things. We're going to cover five, six, seven different things that you can use toggles for around your camp area right now. Show you how to tie them on the end of a line and make the best use of them. Stay with us, guy. Okay, so let's start off with something real simple. Basically, a toggle is just a stick that you have tied onto the end of a line somehow, and you're going to use that toggle as a levering point against something else most of the time. So let's just take this belt, for instance. We'll start off with this Kuxa. This Kuxa, which is just a drinking cup, basically has a toggle that's tied on the end of a line that can just be tucked up inside of this belt, and I have yet to lose it. I don't need to wrap it around anything. It hasn't come out yet. It's snagged and hung up on a few things, and I've never lost it. So that's a good use for a toggle. Now, the belt itself is also held on by a toggle. And basically, I just have a rope belt that has a loop on one end and a toggle tied into the other end, and the toggle becomes the fastening point for that belt. Very quick, simple way, and very simple explanation and visual of how toggles work. Now we're going to talk about some other uses for them around camp as well. Okay, so here we have a toggle that's tied on the end of a piece of rope. And this piece of rope is only about four feet long. And I keep this piece of rope with this toggle in it to use for a lot of things. But I can wrap this thing around in a clove hitch type constrictor knot on the tree. And I can hang my gear off of that toggle to keep it off the ground. I don't have to look for something sticking out of the tree. I don't have to pound nails in a tree or anything else. I can create my own attachment point, And I can hang anything off of this that the weight of this rope and this toggle will take, including my backpack to keep it off the ground if I want to, or to be able to access it more easy without having to bend over. So this is another simple use for a toggle. This works really good for a tarp. If I were going to attach my tarp to this tree, and I didn't want to tie a bunch of fancy knots, I could just wrap this rope around the tree, slip this toggle through my tie-out point, and this becomes the corner of my tarp for something like a plow point shelter. So it works really good for that. That's why this piece of rope with this toggle in it is pretty handy to keep around because I can use it for a lot of things. Again, everything is very simple to get undone. I don't like to have to untie knots, which is one of the reasons I like to use toggles so well because my eyes aren't real good. And looking at small diameter cordages and things like bank line makes it difficult for me if I'm not wearing glasses or I don't have a magnifying glass out to see those small knots to try to untie them. So anytime I can get away with not tying a knot in something or making a self-loosening knot, I'm going to do it. All right, so let's talk real quick about our Roycroft pack frame that we use sometimes. This is our Roycroft pack frame, and it has toggles tied in seven places on the frame. And this is how I teach my students to make them in our pioneering class. They put seven toggles on here and these are used to lash your gear to the frame. They give you something simple that you can wrap the rope around and pull against to tighten up your load. And then when you get to the end, you just put a jam knot in there of some kind. We'll talk about that in just a minute too because a lot of the toggles that I use on things that are going to be under stress, I use a jam type knot. These are just an overhand slip knot, basically like a, a uh, lark's head knot. You can see all I've done is folded that over, made a loop in there and put that inside. The toggle has a notch in it for that to catch into just like that and that self tightens as you pull on it. I'm going to show you how to make this if you have a single string that you want to use. You can use this in conjunction with what's called a jam knot and put a jam knot in that lark's head and it won't come undone either and I use that a lot especially with tarps and things. So. Let's talk about that next. Okay, so let's talk about real quick using toggles as tie outs on our tie out loops for our tarp. You can see I have a toggle on the end of this line and all I have to do is pass that toggle through the loop. There's no untying of knots to get this out. I don't have to try to fiddle with something that I've doubled over in there and pulled down on. And this puts less pressure directly in one spot by having this toggle because it spreads that surface area out across that tie out. Really good to use these if you're using grommets as well. Then we can just tie that up to the tree. I'll show you that. Once I stretch that thing out and tie it up to the tree, I'll let you see what that looks like when it's pulled tight. Of 
Probably went out of camera view right there. We'll see. Yeah, just out of camera view. Okay, so there it is. Piece of cake. When I want to get that out, all I got to do is pull that toggle through the loop. I don't have to mess around with untying anything. Okay, let's talk about toggles around the fire. Okay, if I use a large toggle like this one, I can hang my bucket over the fire with that toggle. Now, obviously, I don't want to get ridiculous and have flames this high when I've got a piece of cordage here. But we've had flames pretty high on these type toggles in a lot of our camps and never burned one of these pieces of cordage off. This cordage is pretty resilient to flame. Again, you don't want a bonfire, but if you've got flames up here, you're not going to hurt it a bit. So let's talk about how to tie this toggle on real quick before we go any further, because this is a pretty good size example. What I've done here is, to get this off, you know, I said I don't like untying knots. All I have to do is pick it real quick with my hand. I don't have to have my glasses on, it's going to loosen up. All I have is a straight piece of cordage here that I've tied a knot in the end of. What I did was, I took that cordage and I doubled it over. I took a bite in the cordage basically, just like this. And I doubled that over against itself to make a loop right here. And when I put this toggle in here, that becomes what's called a lark's head knot. And when I pull that knot tight, it's going to jam this other knot inside the lark's head, just like that. You can see how this knot jams up against that loop going over that lark's head. I can adjust it where I need to on the toggle. And the tighter I pull it, the harder it's going to jam. And it's not going to come undone. But it's very easy to get undone if you need to, and very easy to adjust if you need to. And I use this 99.9% .9 of the time to hang my implements over the fire, like buckets or cook sets. Okay, I have a roll of cordage bank line in my belt pouch that I keep in there all the time. And there's probably, I don't know, maybe 5 feet, something like that, a 36 bank line, with a small toggle that's pointed on both ends, and it is off-center in here. And you can move that anywhere you want to, okay? doesn't matter but I keep it on there almost all the time and I do that so that I have it in my belt pouch at ready access and I use this for a lot of things but one thing I'm going to show you real quick I use it for is to get my water bottles out of the fire if I have a water bottle in direct fire so I've got my canteen sitting here and we'll say that we have a fire here and my water is boiling or it's done I can take this simple piece of cordage and I can drop this toggle into the mouth and pick it up off the fire. When I set it down, because I've got it tied off center, I should be able to pull it sideways and it comes straight out. And that's important to understand that you need to tie that off center to make that happen. But it's a very simple process to drop it down in there and pick it up. And it's a very simple process to pull it out of there just by pulling it sideways. It'll come out of there. Okay? Okay, the other thing I use this for quite frequently in my belt pouch is I use this for cleaning my gun, my 12 gauge, because I can drop this through the barrel, attach a cleaning rag to the other end, soaked in tallow, fat, warm water, and ashes, whatever the case may be that I'm using to clean my weapon with, the bore of my shotgun with, and I can grab this toggle and pull it through, kind of like a makeshift bore snake. It also gives me an emergency trapping device because toggles make great trap triggers, and that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay, so let's talk about a simple way to use a toggle as a trap trigger. What we need is we need a loop. And this loop, I just tied an overhand knot in one end of the line and ran the other end through it. Just like this. Okay, I tied an overhand knot in that side and just put my other line through it. I just tied a small knot on that end to keep it from coming unraveled if I needed to. Then I need to decide how big I want this loop. And once I've decided how big I want this loop to be, then I'm going to put my toggle in. So I'm just going to take a bite in that line, just like this, and I'm going to fold that bite down so that I have two loops. And I'm going to put this toggle through the two loops to form that lark's head. And once I've done that, I can take either one of these other lines and tie an overhead knot in it close to an overhand knot excuse me close to the toggle itself and if I cinch that up close to the knot when I start pulling on the other line it's going to jam now no matter how much I pull on this thing it's not coming undone 
So that gives me my toggle in the line. So I've got a loop that's going to catch my animal. I have a toggle that's going to be my trigger for the trap. And then I have the line that's going off to the distance here that's going to go to my trap engine. Whatever's going to spring my trap, whether that's a sapling, whether that's a dead falling log that I'm using as a counterbalance in the V of a tree, whatever the case may be. The only other thing I need to effectively use this toggle as a trap trigger is I really need a, tea, a, a fork. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the fork and I'm going to hold it in there with the bait stick by friction so that when it releases it comes up. I'll show you that on the ground over here. Okay, so the way this works is you've got your toggle here that's pushed into your Y. You have a bait stick that goes across and your loop is laid on top of that bait stick and that bait stick is dead ended on the other side to just a dead stick of some kind driven into the ground. You'll bait this whether it's by shoving a whole frog on there, whether it's by gluing some type of nuts with pine pitch or something like that to it, but whatever it is, you want the animal to have to work at it to get it, so that when he goes in here to work at it, it pulls loose, and the spring pulls him up off the ground, 